Hi folks, 440 automation, we have it working. This is so cool. Let's show how it works. Let's show some of the lessons that we learned. Let's walk through the things that we did, the Arduino code, the Tormach USB IO, and then most importantly, let's talk about what the takeaways are, how we would do it a little bit differently or what things you should consider if you're going to automate your CNC machine. This is so cool, folks. Welcome to our Wednesday widget. So we posted a few videos leading up to this, which really focused on the sort of mechanical side of it. And we've really learned a lot since then. And one of the things I learned is I had to write out this process. There were too many moving parts. And what I like about this project is we have true bi-directional control between the Arduino and the USB IO device. So one, they talk to each other, which is really important for the workflow and reliability of this. Another mechanical thing that I had to deal with was the fact that the sheet metal was scratching these powder coated clamps as they rotated around. So I thought the solution there, at first I thought this blue uh, sort of tape from McMaster car would work. Ends up it wasn't adhesive back, so I used double sided tape, but it didn't work at all nearly as well as I'd hoped. However, it was nice and slippery. So then I went on McMaster and found some adhesive backed UHMW film that was super slippery and this worked perfectly. Both decreases the coefficient of friction so the parts slide around really nice and it doesn't scratch them up. I also wanted to keep this simple. So by creating this Excel sheet, I know to start off with, I plug in the clear path motor driver. I line the platter so that it's clocked right at six o'clock. I know that because a piece dropped in. I plug in my Arduino. Yes. What happened right now though is it indexed the platter to the engraved position and it went ahead and moved a pneumatic clamp down that locks the piece in play. That takes away the fact that there's a little bit of slop in the platter. Now, yes, we could add more index positions, but I think as I said in the last video, folks, that's not the point. You know, I do these 300 at a time. I don't need to do 300 an hour. I just want it automated and I want it reliable. Having to have multiple positions would make it more difficult to tram each one up. On the flip side, now that I am using this pneumatic clamp, I have a little bit more luxury of a loose fit and that still holds it down flat. The machine is now ready for me to hit cycle start on PathPilot for the G-code. I hit cycle start, it moves down, it engraves. Picks up the next one, goes around, clamp goes down, it just keeps going. This is one of those projects, folks, when I started, I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I thought there has to be a way. In a little bit, some of this is scrappy. You'll notice I haven't built the feed chute yet, which I had a piece of tape with a, for a cardboard chute that just ran them down into a hopper. I took it off for filming. But baby steps, break it down. And then for me, again, it's like fail fast, fail cheap. I just, to me, this is so cool. I got really inspired again when we uh, went to Pearson. Uh, Pearson work holding out in California. They've done some versions of these on their hoses that are just so cool. To me, this is such a no brainer. Nowadays, we have these amazing CNC machines. Why should I sit here and load them one at a time? We can put a whole stack of these things in, just keeps going. Let's take a closer look at some of the mechanical stuff. Let's walk through the order of operations and just exactly how this thing works. So the first thing we do, is we manually home the platter. What does that mean? It means we need to align it at six o'clock right where the clamp drops through the feed chute. Next thing we do is plug in Arduino. This is important because when we plug in the Arduino, it's gonna go ahead automatically start running the Arduino code because that's what Arduinos do. The first thing that they do is they go through their setup code. When they run their setup code, they set the pin modes, but importantly here, it's gonna to move to the engraved position. So that rotates the carousel around. The clear path is set up such that 8,000 is the number of units I need to make for one complete revolution. And we were originally engraving halfway, or it's uh, 12 o'clock. Ends up we're now going a little bit more 4,050, so that ends up being about 2.25 degrees past uh, 12 o'clock, and that helps keep the spindle a, a little bit further away from the pneumatic cylinder that clamps down so that they don't crash into each other. So when we start the Arduino, it goes ahead and moves the engraved position, and then it clamps down the pneumatic cylinder 
So digital right pin 7 on the Arduino trips the relay, which actuates the solenoid, pneumatic solenoid, that locks the clamp down. Then it starts looping the code, but I don't want it to loop. I want it to wait. So we do that by saying, look, read digital pin 11, and its default state is high. It's pulled high with a resistor, but when it goes low, go ahead and run the program. So let's go back to Excel. We plug in the Arduino. Arduino runs the setup, like I just mentioned. Goes into wait mode. So now I hit cycle start in Pathpilot. What that does, it runs my G-code. This is just stuff that I posted out from Fusion 360 that does the actual engraving. What's different is here at the end. As soon as it gets to the end, M64P0 tells the Arduino to index the platter. How does it do that? Take a look at the PDF. Again, link in the video description here. That's relay zero. So when that relay closes, I've got the Arduino looking to, this is the run program, digital read pin 11. So what happens there? It releases the clamp. That way it can rotate, it does short to pause. Then it moves to the, uh, just before the load position. I don't want it to move super fast because I want it to go slower as it goes underneath the feed stack. It's a much more reliable pickup. And then it moves back to the load position, clamps down, and then this is the cool part to me because it's bi-directional communication. I write digital pin high, and that triggers this line in the G-code, which if we look at the G-code, M66P whatever. So that's the input on the USB I.O. device. So this other left side here is telling it, okay, Arduino is now saying, I'm done. I've rotated the pattern around. When I've rotated it, that means I've dropped a clamp off. I've picked up a new clamp. I've made it back to the engraved position. Pathpilot, you're allowed to go ahead and run the next part. In between there, we just have a short pause, kind of like a debounce, basically, when it's told the Arduino to index the platter. We've got to wait a second and then turn that signal or that pin back off. The other trick here is we need this G-code to loop. When I get here, I want it to start back at the beginning. The way we do that, at the very top, uh, I think you can actually change the 103, but it's O, not 0, O, 103, repeat. I happen to have it set at 77 times. And then at the very end, you put O, 103, end repeat before, I know it has to go before your uh, M30. Uh, I don't know about the G30, but that's where I put it here. And that works. A couple other notes, obviously the USB I.O. device has to be plugged into your PathPilot USB. Um, I had problems when I was plugging the Arduino into the same computer. That was just to provide Arduino power, so I ended up plugging the Arduino into a 12-volt you know, iPhone USB power adapter. I suspect that could have been some current uh, or electrical noise problems there. I've got some additional information on how the Arduino worked as well as on the repeat code or looping code for PathPilot or Linux CNC. Let's talk about some of the things I learned. First off, I wish I had controlled the rotation of our platter via the outside of it. In other words, something around the circumference. It could have been a chain or a timing belt pulley or even a gear that meshed to it. Uh, why? Because it would have meant I could have used a pretty inexpensive motor to precisely control it around an area where you had much better torque. By turning it in the center, the clear path with a 10 to 1 reduction does work pretty well, but in hindsight, I wish I had done on the outside lesson learned. I didn't think I was going to necessarily have to arrest the motion of the clamp until late in the project. I should have been smart enough to realize that from the get-go. This actually worked pretty well, seriously. A relatively expensive uh, cylinder clamps down on it. Folks, most of all, to me, this is all about just do it. We had folks that say it wouldn't work. We had folks that said this is, you know, the feed mechanism wouldn't work. You just got to do it and try. And if you fail, that's okay. We failed a bunch of little times along this project, but we got it working. We learned, uh, yes, there would be better ways or more elegant ways to do this feed system. This is, and this whole thing is not an industrial grade, fully automation lights out machine, but it does what I want it to do. And again, it reminds me of the Pearson factory tour video where they put enough parts in for the machine to run for a couple hours and then it's 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 hands off while they go do other really good important stuff that to me is awesome the potential here with the Tormach USB IO pretty darn cool think of this you can machine a little bank with switches 
And depending on what part you had in the machine or maybe certain features that you wanted on parts or not on others, you could just flip switches to have it run different programs or different sections of code. How cool is that? Like this idea of kind of closing the gap, not reinventing the wheel, having it smart, intelligent, making it easy for folks that aren't machinists to run these machines. I think that's pretty cool. Again, link in the video description to where you can get more information on the bill of materials, the Arduino code, uh, our Excel worksheet showing the workflow. Folks, thanks for watching. Take care. See you next Wednesday.